What is up everybody, Doomwake here. Welcome back to another modern video on the channel. As always, before we continue, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the video. Today we're going to be playing some Hammer Time. This is uh, what a lot of people still believe to be one of the best decks in the format. And me including, I do think it is still one of the best decks. And this is uh, a bit of a different take and innovation from the challenge last week's challenge top eight list. And a lot of what you see here is pretty standard stuff. You know, the zero drops, Esper Sentinel, Sigardas Aid, Pure Steel Pallet, and Stoneforge Mystic, Colossus Hammer, all that stuff. But we're doing a little bit of a blue splash for Lavinia Azorius Renegade, which is a blue white 2 2. Your opponents, and this is not, it's not symmetrical, it's its one-sided. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with mana value greater than the number of lands that player controls. So you think Force of Negation, um, Force of Vigor, that kind of stuff. They can't cast those unless they have three or four lands. And the second part of the, the text also stops those. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. So the Hammer Time deck is good. But one of its very, very weakest matchups is Elementals. And the reason for that is Solitude and Fury both are free ways to interact with the battlefield on top of the fact that they can ephemerate them so early in the game to basically make it that you can just never go for a hammer, right? The nice thing about Lavinia is Lavinia shuts off all of that stuff. Solitude can't be cast for free. Fury can't be cast for free. Ephemerate on the rebound gets countered. And also, if they can't cast Solitude and Fury, their Ephemerates aren't really doing that much anyways. And there's not a lot of recourse that they usually have because all of their removal is baked into Fury and Solitude. And if they're not able to cast those spells until, you know, they get to five mana to start hard casting them, you can usually find a way to kill them before turn five because your deck is pretty consistent at that. So Lavinia is really nice against that, and also one of the best sideboard cards against Hammer Time is Force of Vigor, because it's able to kill Urza Saga, Colossus Hammer, uh, so it's really hard to go for a Colossus Hammer kill when your opponent has access to Force of Vigor. Lavinia notably also shuts that off. While also being good against um, the cards Crashing Footfalls and Living End, because both of those come off of uh, the Cascade spells. So Lavinia, I think, is doing a lot of a lot of good work in the current format, and I'm pretty excited to try this. And you don't really sacrifice a lot in terms of the mana base. You know, the the only thing that you do sacrifice is the sack lands, like some are playing Silent Clearing, Horizon Canopy, Sunbake Canyon, some of that stuff. So you do sacrifice those sack lands in order to fit the fetch lands and the Hallowed Fountains and the Sea Chrome Coast. But we still have Nexus and Saga, which is, you know, the the old standbys. So I'm really interested to see how that plays out. And again, everything else is pretty much the same. Your Mem Knights, Thopters, Sentinels, Sigardas Aids, Hammers, Springleaf Drums to get uh, Man Acceleration with Mem Knight and Thopter, and then Stoneforge Paladin, the one cranial plating. Two Ingenious Smith, and I think that's where they found room to make the Lavinias. I think they cut two Smiths and some other random one ofs that you'll see sometimes, um, like Soul Guide Needle, that kind of stuff that you give at Saga. And that's how we made room for the Lavinias. Uh, and then, again, the mana base, Urza Saga, Ink Moth Nexus. Just to kind of give you a quick rundown for those of you who haven't seen this deck. What we're doing is we're trying to put a Sigarda's Aid or a Pure Steel Paladin into play, which Sigarda's Aid equips... Uh, you can play your equipment at instant speed, and it auto-equips something. Pure Steel Paladin, if you have Metalcraft, make sure equip costs zero. And we're trying to utilize that with Colossus Hammer to instantly put a hammer on a creature to get the bonus without having to um, pay the equip cost, which is normally eight mana. So we're, we're basically getting... Uh, plus eight mana on the exchange, whether it's Sigarda's Aid or Pure Steel Paladin. So that's the interaction that we're abusing. And it's really awesome that Urza Saga can find Colossus Hammer, which is pretty sicko too. Urza Saga just kind of makes this deck really, really over the top of, of uh, what it was before. Now in the, when we get to the sideboard, we have um, just sort of, you know, some good generic answers like Path Takes Off or Merktad Region and Death Shadow. Seal of Cleansing against... Uh, opposing Urza Saga and Colossus Hammer decks, as well as being able to kill um, just, you know, any artifact or enchantment that you might come across. Sanctifier and Vec, very good against the reanimator decks that have been popping up, as well as being good against the Grixis uh, and Ragavan DRC decks. Prismatic Ending, very good in the mirror, very good against decks that are playing one drops, just a very versatile card. 
Obviously, we're a companion Luris deck because, you know, who isn't at this point in the, in the, in the metagame? Uh, our one Pithing Needle, when we want to sideboard that in against control decks, uh, and possibly other Urza Saga decks, but you got to be careful with that because you don't want to name Saga because sometimes you have your own Sagas. Two Soul Guide Lanterns, again, DRC, Luris, Ragavan, and uh, Living End, Graveyard decks, Dredge, Reanimator, all that stuff. Defense Grid, which I'm not... 100% sure is going to be that good. I mean, obviously, you would want to bring it in against control decks where they have a lot of interaction. I guess where it really shines is probably against Crashing Footfalls because a lot of what their game plan is is just hold up Force of Vigor, Bone Crusher Giant, Brazen Borrower, Dead Gone, even Violent Outburst plus Crashing Footfalls. All of that stuff gets significantly hampered when, the, when there's a Dampic Sphere or a Defense Grid in play. So that seems like it, it's probably good in that matchup, as well as being good against control, so they can, you know, shut off counter spells. And then Void Mirror, which is really good against all of the Cascade decks, because similar to Lavinia, when they play a spell, if there was no mana spent to play it, it gets countered. Also good against Tron, um, because Tron usually, I mean, specifically Eldrazi Tron, but Tr like Green Tron, uh, it does stop a turn three Karn, but Green Tron has. Um, you know, they have Yavimaya and they have the Chromatics to be able to filter the seven colorless into green mana, so you got to watch out for that. Um, but just very good against Cascade, decent against Tron decks. That's another thing that Lavinia is good against is Tron. Uh, with the uptick in Tron, if your opponent only has three lands in play, even though their three lands produce seven mana, they still can't cast Karn Liberated. So Lavinia seems really good right now, so I'm pretty excited to see how this plays out, and I'm excited to show it to each and every one of you today. So without further ado, I'll see you back in just a little bit for number one. Alrighty, YouTube round number one, blue white hammer. Let's see what we are up against. Opponent does not have a companion. I have a cigar to aid. We have a turn to Lavinia, so this hand's basically missing. This hand is kind of everything except a hammer. The nice thing about keeping hands like this is between hammer itself, Stoneforge Mystic, and Urza Saga, you have generally have a lot of copies of uh, the card hammer. So keeping a hand that has a way to equip and a good curve, even without a hammer, I think is worth it. Ooh, the post-combat Swift Spear. I think they maybe just click through their first combat step. I'm going to lead on Esper Sentinel. And the nice thing about this is if they want to kill the Sentinel, they probably have to tap out. And then if I just draw a hammer, I can slam it on the Ornithopter while they're tapped out. So that is the nice thing about this particular line. So it looks like they're going to blaze the Sentinel and give me a card. So now we need to find a hammer. Second Cigar to aid, not what we're looking for. So we'll take two, go to 15. Any hammers? Any hammers? Drew an Urza Saga. Hmm, this is really awkward. It's really awkward because I wanted to play Lavinia, but this is kind of where the tension comes in is you can't play Saga on two with Lavinia, so I think I have to deploy the Saga this turn. And then we'll just pass. The cool thing about having two Sigarda's Aids, especially against a deck that has, like, red base removal, is if you have two Sigarda's Aids in play and you go for a hammer, if you have two creatures, you can target one with the first aid and two the, the other creature with the second aid. So even if they have a removal spell... You can go, you know, they, they kill the first creature and you just equip to the other one because you have two separate Sigarda's Aid triggers. So that is something that might come up. Alright, they have an Eidolon. Alright, I'm not going to play around a free spell. We'll happily block this thing. So I'm at 13. The question is, what are we doing here? So I drew a Springleaf Drum. So we have to decide if casting the Springleaf Drum is worth taking two damage. And I think the answer to that question is probably yes. Because it makes the Construct into a 3-3, three, three, which means we actually get the profitably block the Guide or the Eidolon. So I can go Springleaf Drum off of Sea Chrome Coast, play Planes, tap the Ornithopter, the Drum, and the Planes for mana to make a Construct. So I think we're going to do that. This does mean that, I, that I'm not playing the second Sigarda's Aid this turn, which kind of, um, as I alluded to last turn, it is kind of nice to have two aids in play when 
when you go for the hammer. But I don't think we can afford that luxury. So they're bolting me and then going to combat. All right, they're shoving. Let's see if we hit off the guide. There's a Mem Knight on top, which is not the best, but also not the worst. So they're at 13. Oh, do they just have a Searing Blaze? Hmm. I think I'm going to block the Goblin Guide. I don't plan on casting any more spells anyways. I'm just going to search for a hammer. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. Like, maybe there's a world I just make a construct, get a Shadow Spear, and equip that way. I'm just trying to think if that makes more sense than trying to, uh, to go for a hammer. Because if I go for hammer, and they have a burn spell, it's kind of awkward. But if my construct doesn't die, yeah, okay, this is fine. I guess I'm just dead to Boros Charm either way, but... If this construct doesn't die, then what ha what can what's going to happen is I'm going to make a construct here to make it a 4-4. Then I'm going to go for hammer. This will be a 4-4. They won't be able to kill this this uh, with with a hammer. Because it'll be... Uh, yeah. So they're dead. Cool. I think they might have messed that up. I'm not sure. But yeah, they're just dead to the onboard stuff. Okay. Interesting game. I think our opponent maybe missequenced that. I'm not sure they had a good line, but... Yeah, I don't know that they had a good line. Alright, I will attack you with my 15-15. It appears that we are going to game number two. Just a minute here. Alright, so against Burn, I want to bring in Sanctifier on Vec. And I think Prismatic Ending. I'm not a huge fan of Path against Burn. I don't think they have anything worth sealing. Void Mirror, no. Needle, no. And I think I'm just going to cut the Lavinias. This is, uh, I don't think a matchup where, where Lavinia is really worth that much. And I kind of want to keep everything else intact. So let's do that. Alright, game number two against Burn. Let's see what our opening hand contains. Our opening hand contains everything that we could ever want with the exception of no hammer. Again, similar to the first hand, you do kind of have to keep these hands, even though there's no hammers. Uh, your deck has way more hammers than ways to equip. Like, you have 12 hammers and 8 ways to equip. So you want to value any hand that has a way to equip more than a hand that doesn't, if that makes sense. And see? Perfect. Always, also, sequencing with Springleaf Drum, you always want to play the drum prior to the creature, because if I play the Ornithopter first, they can just kill the Ornithopter in response to the Springleaf Drum. And I'm going to lead on Sentinel, I think. I think it's worth having the extra creature in play. Then I can just go Aid plus Mystic next turn. I assume they're going to kill my Sentinel here, if they're, killing, if they're casting a spell at all. They might just not. This is a Searing Blaze, maybe? Goblin Guide. Alright, I will choose to not block. Well, maybe they won't even give me the option. Alright, we'll take a land. It's fine. 17. What do they got? Ink Moth Nexus. Okay, let's uh, go to attacks. Attack for Uno. And then now, I think I'm going to actually just play Stoneforge Shadow Spear and just not let them know that I have the Sigarda's Aid. I think I like that better. Them not knowing I have the Sigarda's Aid, they might play in a different way. Like, they might tap out and then just lose to the Nexus. So, I think giving them the least amount of information possible is pretty good. And I'm going to cast. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tap the Stone Forge because I'd much rather. Um, I guess it doesn't matter too much with one, which one they kill, but. But yeah. So now if they tap out, they die. They don't know that, but they can probably assume that. All right. They're casting Lightning Bolt on the Sentinel. And I let's see if they're gonna pay or not. I guess the upside to playing the second Cigarda's Aid or playing the Cigarda's Aid if I draw another Hammer. 
Alright, there's a drum on top, not gonna block. So they're just gonna hold up interaction. Which means that we get to go get to go Sea Chrome Coast. Get to go. I'm gonna play the I guess they can have two in two spells here. I also have to consider um What's the card? Deflecting Palm a little bit. I don't know that I have a good way to play around it. Well, I have the Shadow Spear, right? So if I go for a huge attack, as long as my creature has lifelink, we're kind of covered against Palm that way. So why don't I go Pure Steel Paladin, and then we can tap the... Mm. This sequencing was kind of poor. I should have What I should have done was played the Aid... And then I should have tapped Plains, Springleaf Drum, Thopter, and then cast the Paladin. Because now, even though I kind of wanted to have an extra block, uh, I wanted to tap this, because I don't want to block with this. Now they can actually respond to the Sigarda's Aid. Because I should have also equipped this first. Yeah, this was poor sequencing. What I, I should have done was play Sigarda's Aid first. Okay, they didn't respond. So now let's equip the Stoneforge Mystic with Shadow Spear. And then let's cast Colossus Hammer and see what they do. I'm casting this pre-combat. Because if they kill the Paladin, then I can just get to slap this on a thing. I guess there was no reason to... What was the reason to cast it pre-combat? I guess if they have, like, Wear Tear for Sigarda's Aid? Because then I can't... It, yeah, I guess that's a reason to. I don't know. I, I sequenced a little bit poorly there. I'm trying to think of what the correct way to do that there. Maybe it's just one of those things where I have an embarrassment of riches and it doesn't matter. But I think the proper sequencing would have been Sigarda's Aid first, then go tap Plains, tap Springleaf from Ornithopter, play Pure Steel, um, then equip the Shadow Spear, and then probably cast this main phase to play around to Disenchant on Sigarda's Aid. So I think I did that okay, but I just think I messed up the order a little bit. Anyways, we're 1 0. We beat Burn. I think it's traditionally a, a close ish matchup, but you put a lot of um, onus on the burn player to all, to just never tap mana, so I think you kind of have the uh, you have the you have the, the right of way there and then with stuff like Urza Saga, it just gets even easier so, 1-0, oh, I'll see you back in just a little bit, round number 2 Alrighty YouTube, round number 2 blue-white hammer, let's see if we can keep it going Hmm Sand does not have colored mana, we have a drum but no zero Uh I don't think I can keep this. I think I'm going to ship it. Okay. Yeah, this hand's got a lot of air, but it does have some upside, I think. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to go to five with this hand. Like, we could put Lurse in our hand on turn two. Is that good enough? I don't know. Probably not, but I don't know if I want to go to five. Flooded Strand, huh? So blue white control. Okay. Let's go... I think I can afford to play the Nexus first. Let's cast Drum. And then we'll go Memnite. Second Drum. Ornithopter, go. And we'll see what they are up to. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. hmm. Misty Rain Forest. All right. Red mana. Oh, Flank and Harbinger. Oh, I just didn't look at their companion. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Hmm. <laughs> this matchup is not great. This matchup is not great. Omnath, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, things are not going well for us. Don't think I'm going to attack. This is going to be a rough one. Probably not going to take very many draw steps this game. It's definitely a matchup where 
well, Lavinia would shine, but we do not have access to her. Uh, I'm not going to deploy the Luris because they're likely just going to kill it. Just fire up the Nexus, get him for one while we can. Get in for one while we can. Alright, your turn. Got a whole lot of nothing going on. They're going to play an Omnath next turn. Which is not good for us. Now, we do have Lavinia's, and we have some good sideboard cards. So, I think maybe this matchup is close after sideboarding. I mean, ideally you find Lavinia against them, but... Did not have that. Maybe with the Kahira, I was supposed to go to 5, just looking for Lavinia. Also, on top of the fact that my hand just didn't really do all that much. Okay. I mean, this is not really helping. Still, I'm still going to wait on the Luris. If I play the Luris, it's so likely to die. And I want to at least get something out of it. I guess I could be attacking with the Memnites, because... Two, three. Yeah, because if they if they decide to trade for a Mem Knight, then I can just get back the Luris. It's not that bad. Looks like they have endurance. Okay. So they're gonna eat the eat the Inkloth Nexus. Hmm. Hmm hmm hmm. They'll probably take two because they know about the Luris. Nope, they are gonna trade. I guess they want me to play the Luris. Well, I mean. I don't really have anything else to do, so I guess I'll play it. Play Memnite, and your turn. A lot of nothing going on. Alright, there's mana for Omnath. Oh, they're not going to play Omnath. What do they have? I think if they just go, like, Fury Ephemerate, I'll probably just concede. Even that, yeah. Alright, we'll just we'll just pack it in. I don't think we're getting out of this. Alright, Void Mirror coming in. Defense Grid, no. Well, actually, maybe Defense Grid's good. Needle, no. Luris, no. Path, maybe. Seal, no. Sanctifier, no. Ending, not really. Uh, what's bad against them? Sentinel is not great. They don't really have a lot of non-creature spells. So maybe I want to do that and cut something else and bring in the two endings. No, ending's not great. I'll just keep in one Sentinel. Just for artifact count. Alrighty, back here for game number two. Playing as Elementals. See if we can find a Lavinia. Well, there's two Lavinias. The second one is not the best, but I think I'm going to keep this hand. I think I'm going to go planes on turn one. I actually don't want to deploy the Sigarda's aid until we find, like I want to hang on to this for as long as possible. I'm just going to go planes drum and pass. The reason is they, they bring in a bunch of Foundation Breakers, so I, I want to wait until I have a Hammer to expose this, so I can play this plus Hammer in the same turn. But I'm definitely going to play Lavinia. That was actually a really good draw, because now I can go Lavinia and Saga. Yeah, let's do that. I like that a lot. Lavinia is quite good against them. I guess... Hmm. Maybe this was bad, because now they can... Solitude the Memnite in response. So even though I get to play the Saga this turn, I'm exposing the Memnite to a Solitude. Which, if I had just gone Marsh Flats for Hallowed Fountain and played Lavinia, they wouldn't have been able to play the Solitude. But uh, I think getting the Saga into play a turn early is pretty good. Because now I can just go play Marsh Flats, fetch for Planes, or I guess maybe Hallowed Fountain, um, play Sigarda's Aid, hold up Saga, next turn. Get Hammer off of this. Hammer comes into play. Aid's already in play, so. What's this? Prismatic ending? Engineered explosives on two. Guess that does it as well, huh? Okay, that was a really good draw. So. Hmm. Now what? 
Now I guess I give up the... I guess I give up the Construct token, right? I just go Cigar to Zade plus Hammer. And attack for 13, put them to 6. And then the Saga chapter goes off and then I get another Hammer. Which I guess I would put on the same Mem Knight. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Alternatively, I could just attack for 3, make a Saga token. Which I think is worse. So let's just go aid and then hammer up the Mem Knight. I'm not going to put hammer on Lavinia because they have an E on two. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Maybe I'm supposed to wait on the hammer. I'm not really sure. I haven't. I don't have enough experience in this matchup to know when it's right to go for it. But this seems like a fine spot. I mean, obviously it sucks now. They can just pop the explosives and then solitude the Mem Knight. But I do still get to make a Saga token. It's not the end of the world. And then I can hammer up the Saga token. So then I have two things with a hammer on it. And play a second Lavinia if I draw a land. So that's kind of cool. And this also implies they even have the Solitude. Which they basically have to have Solitude in order to keep playing, right? Because they could have Ending. They could go pop the Explosives, Ending the Mem Knight. this green another explosives okay sure so they're gonna pop the one that's on one but then they're gonna take three damage and go to one okay so let's go get hallowed fountain tapped i think this ends up working out well for us Okay, so <clears throat> just make sure I'm not missing lethal or something. Yeah, because even if I get Shadow Spear, they can just pop this. And they still only take three. So let's just go make a token. Sure, they're just going to pop it now. Okay. Oh, I could have floated mana because I brought in the needle. Ah, I could have floated mana. So if I float mana, they have to pop the explosives that's on one. And then I just get the shadow spear, use the mana floating equip, and attack them for four. Yeah, that was that was a mistake. Okay, whoops. Uh, shoot. I guess I'm going to get a Mem Knight. Yeah, I messed that up. Okay. Good to know. So they're going to one... Stack is not that easy to play. So now they can pop the explosives and then have fury. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. This is bad. The AC is bad. Alright, they didn't have the fury. Never mind. We're working on the kinks. We're working through this together. Again, I don't play a lot of hammer time, so... <laughs> a lot of this is new to me. It's a learning experience. They didn't have the fury anyways, so... Game number three. Game number three. Let's go. Alright, reveal my Luris. Let's see if we can find some Lavinias. No Lavinias. This hand does have a lot of stuff. And even though it doesn't have Lavinia, I can't imagine you can just mulligan this hand. Like, this hand is just the nuts, right? I mean, I understand that their deck has Solitude, but... Like, if you're mulliganing this hand, you should just be playing a different deck. Like, I understand that the matchup is not great and they have Solitude, but this, like, requires them to have Solitude on turn two. I think I'm down with it. Alright, they're on six. It's gonna go Sea Chrome Coast, Ornithopter, Sigardazade. Alright, Breeding Pool tapped. I accept. Let's go Ornithopter. I'm just debating if I want to play the Mem Knight or not. I think I will. Honestly, like, you don't want to expose a ton of stuff to an early Fury. 
But I think if I can bait out a Fury, that's not actually that bad for me. Because I'm just going to play Stoneforge Mystic anyways next turn. I'm not going to go for it. Ooh. Okay, let's attack first. I'm just going to attack for one and play a Stoneforge. That was actually a sicko draw. We need to find a uh, colored mana. Whether that be a Springleaf Drum or a Plains or anything like that. Alright, Stoneforge. Search up a hammer. And then, hopefully, everything works out and we draw planes. Well, just any colored mana. Hallowed Fountain, Seacrum Coast, Plains, Drum, any of that stuff works. I guess Drum is probably the worst one, because Drum doesn't let us double spell. Hmm. They have Alpine Moon, too? Is that common? I don't know. I feel like that's not common. Could be wrong. I haven't kept up with the elementals list. Alright, Temple Garden, which I assume is going to be untapped to represent Ephemerate. At least bluff it. Yep. Alright, they got four cards. That is not a colored mana. So, do we go for Hammer Hammer? And they have four cards. Yeah, if we go for Double Hammer, they could have Solitude plus Ephemerate. I mean, are we really beating Solitude plus Ephemerate anyways? I mean, the downside is we, you know, we have a bunch of, a couple Hammers in play. And maybe that's actually okay, because we just have a Paladin as a follow-up if we find a White Source. So, I don't think it's that bad. Alright, I'm going to put it on the Thopter. See if they want a Solitude. Alright, there's the Solitude. Which I assume means they have the Ephemerate as well. No, they don't have the Ephemerate. Okay, well now I'm definitely going to go for the other Hammer. I kind of assumed they had Ephemerate, but let's put it on the Memnite. Alright. So, take 12, go to 4. Now we have an 11-11. Well, that can't be that bad for us. Alright, they're off it. So, yeah, I don't know. Learning through the kinks a little bit. I think I maybe, uh, maybe messed up game 2. Well, I definitely messed up game 2. I should have floated mana with the Saga. Um, but yeah, this deck is, uh, you know, it's not the easiest to play. A lot of people think that this deck is easy to play. But there are some definitely some things you get a sequencing that you got to work on. But anyways, 2-0. Oh. Hope you enjoy the games. I'll see you back here in just a little bit. Round number three. All right, YouTube. Round three. Let's get it. Trying to work out the kinks a little bit again. Still getting used to this deck. All right, what do we got? We have a turn one Sentinel, a turn two Smith. Trying to find Hammer. And then we have, you know, eight plus Hammer after that. I'm down to keep this. I think this hand's got some pretty high upside. Once again, keep uh, reiterating that your deck has... More hammers than ways to equip, so any hand with a way to equip is, uh, you put a lot more, uh, put a lot more stock into that, into that type of hand. Into those cards, I should say, aid plus paladin. It's another burn deck, perhaps. Alright, Sacred Foundry. It smells like burn to me. Ooh, dredge. I feel feel like Dredge is probably an okay matchup. That's just my leading on Sentinel. Yeah, I think I am, because if they play, if their plan is to play Cathartic Reunion or something like that, I want to draw a card off of Sentinel. Alright, so they're going to upkeep. They hit a Dredger. That's pretty good. They do have uh, some lovely, lovely Sanctifier Invex post board. That card is really good against Dredge. This game might not be looking the best for us. Do they keep a one lander? Ooh. Okay. Well, traditionally speaking, them keeping a one lander is pretty good for you. Hmm. So a couple different ways to sequence this hand. We could lead Stoneforge for hammer. Next turn, go aid hammer. We could go Smith and try and spike a hammer, and then go aid hammer, follow up Stoneforge. 
because I kind of want the Stoneforge to get a Shadow Spear if the Smith finds a hammer. That being said, I think it them missing land drops, it is probably in my best interest to just pressure them as much as possible, which involves Stoneforge for hammer, I think. Because they kind of have to stop dredging if they're missing land drops. Like, they're, I don't think they're going to win the game by just never hitting a second land drop and trying to dredge five every turn. I think we're going to be favored in that game because their, their, their draw is just going to be too slow at that point. So I think that they I think they might have to take a turn off of uh, off of dredging here and just try to try to hit a second land drop. Well, they're gonna keep on the dredging. Okay, I am okay with this. I will take four, go to eleven. I guess we still kind of have to find a pierce to or a shadow spear. How about an Ornithopter? Okay, so why don't we go cast Ornithopter. Cast Sigarda's Aid. And attack with both. And I think I'm just going to hammer whichever one they don't block. I could just attack with Stoneforge, but they 100% chump block if I do that. This way they trade with the Sentinel. Oh, they're not. Well, I am going to hammer, because I will happily take my 10 damage. So also gets it out of conflagrate range. So now they take 11. 12, actually, go to 8. <clears throat> they now have to leave a blocker back. If we draw Shadow Spear, it's pretty much just game over. Paladin's also kind of nice, because we have Metalcraft, so we can move around the, uh, the Colossus Hammer. Let's see if they draw a land or not. Because I don't think they dredged. Yeah, they didn't dredge this turn. So let's see if they found a second land. And if they want to leave anything back. Okay, well this attack doesn't really accomplish much, because I just get to block it for free. Unless they thought that I wanted to chump block the amalgam, which maybe I did, but... Alright, Marsh Flats. So, do we want to play a Smith? I do have to worry about just straight up dying to conflagrate. <laughs> because, I mean, they have seven cards. If they draw a land, they're just going to go play a, play a land from their hand, have seven cards to conflagrate me. Now, I am at eight, so I think what I want to do is smith. And if I miss on Shadow Spear or a Hammer, both of which are lethal, then I can just choose to not fetch, right? And just have some blockers back. Because there's really not much of a reason to play... The other Sigarda's aid. So I can just do this, force a chump block. They take one go to seven. And now if they draw land, they can conflagrate for seven. Which I guess would be one, two, three, four, five, two to me is six, then they have four damage four damage, so it's not lethal. I just don't have to fetch here. Okay, so they never found second land. Cool. Winning game one is pretty huge because we get to bring in these Sanctifiers. Now, we only have two of them, but they are still pretty good. Uh, path, Ending. Got Soul Guides, too. I don't think I want the Spot Removal against them. I think what I'm going to do is cut Lavinia. Yeah, hold on. How does Lavinia work with... Conflagrate. Let me read Conflagrate here. Conflagrate MTG. So Conflagrate is XX red. And then the flashback mana cost is red red discard X cards. So if they try to cast Conflagrate for six... Each opponent who can't cast non-creature spells with mana value greater than the number of lands that player controls. It does stop Conflagrate, right? If they have two lands in play, they can't Conflagrate for anything more than one? Because the mana cost is XX. I'm not actually sure how that works. Um, that said, I still think it's better to cut Lavinia, just, just to, for curve purposes. Like, I'm bringing in two drops, and I want to keep my curve pretty low. 
Um, even if Lavinia does stop Conflagrate, which let me know in the comment section below if, if you know how that works, because I couldn't find anything. Um, but even though, even that, I still want to keep my curve pretty low, and I like Sentinel, because Sentinel on turn one before they cast a two-mana draw spell is pretty good. So I think I would still rather keep the Sentinels in this matchup. And I'm still not sure whether or not Lavinia actually stops it. Okay, what do we have here? We have no colored mana. We have a Thopter, a Hammer, eh, I'm going to Mulligan. Okay, this hand has colored mana, a Sentinel, and a Sigardazade. Sounds good to me. I am in. <clears throat> I got to look that up, though. I don't actually know how that interaction works. My guess would be Conflagrate would not be able to be cast, but I'm not sure if my instinct is correct. All right, so let's go Sea Chrome Coast, Springleaf Drum, Memnite Esper Sentinel, and this way we get a card if they play a uh, two mana draw spell, whether that's Cathartic Reunion or Thrilling Discovery, which gives us a card closer towards Hammer, and we already have the aid, so. And Dredge does not usually keep hands without draw spells, so we're likely getting a card out of the Sentinel. So we just need to find a Hammer. Just need to find a Hammer. You have to watch out for Ancient Grudge. Ooh, even better. I will happily draw a card off of that. Alright, so Conflagrate could be a little dicey if we play the Sentinel. So we could just put Luris into our hand. Eh, I still think it's better to play the Sentinel. I'm gonna play I'm gonna put out the cigar to there too. Alright, your turn to go to fifteen, dredge loam. <sighs> See if they hit the conflagrate. Not dredging. Very interesting. Huh. And they have a fetch land in their hand. I wonder why they didn't dredge there. Very intriguing. Very, very intriguing. Alright, Saga's pretty cool. We'll do that and we'll put the rest of my hand. wonder if... What would be the reason for not dredging there? I'm confused. I can't think of one. I mean... I guess the idea is they knew they were casting Stinkweed Imp. Okay, they're still not dredging. Hmm. I don't really understand that. I'm not I'm not sure I get that. Huh. I'm confused. Okay, let's go. Hallowed Fountain tapped, pass. Then we can go end step, make a construct, and put a shadow spear on it. I'm just gonna power through these stinkweed imps. I know that they're gonna get to trade for my construct token, but with the shadow spear, I can likely just present lethal over the course of two turns. So confused. Am I missing something? Let me know in the comment section below. What? What? Why are they not dredging? What am I missing? I don't know. I'm I'm confused. Very strange. Alright, we'll make a token. I guess I don't even have to cast the Shadow Spear yet. I have enough mana. Rather wait to see if I draw a Paladin. Alright, so let's make another thing. Let's go get a Soul Guide Lantern. Oh, well, actually, no, just get a Hammer. Right, Hammer plus Shadow Spear should kill them. Yeah. Hammer the one that can attack... Cast a Memnite. I would love to use that ability. Cast a Memnite. Play a land. Go to attacks. Attack with the big one. They're going to block with Stinkweed Imp. And then we'll cast a Shadow Spear. Alright, equip this thing. Love to use the ability. Alright, take 18. No big deal. I don't I don't really know what happened there. 
Uh, I don't know why they weren't dredging. I'm sure there's got to be some sort of reason. I don't know. But we're 3-0. So that's cool. I'll see you back in just a little bit. Round number four. All right, everybody. Round number four. We're playing against the man, the myth, the legend himself. Aspiring Spike. Said he's playing for a trophy. All right. He's in the trophy race. For those of you who don't watch Aspiring Spike, you're you're missing out. Twitch.tv slash Aspiring Spike. Definitely go check him out. Uh, what do we got here? Sand is not great. It's pretty slow. He's on Lurus. Hmm. Coast, Shadow Spear, Saga, Mystic. We have Paladin to follow. Yeah, okay. I mean, the sand's slow, but I think it's still pretty good. I'm going to keep it. I don't know what he's up to. Maybe burn? I'm not sure. Black Cleave Cliffs, huh? Okay. Well, my hand is, like, pretty Thoughtseize proof, so I'm kind of okay with this. Kind of okay with this. Took a Paladine. Okay. Let's go Saga... Stoneforge, get a hammer. And I'm not going to play the Ornithopter because I don't want it to know what I drew. I don't think it really matters all that much. Okay, so now he's going to take the other Paladin. I assume that's what was happening. Den of the Bugbear. Okay. Land would be nice. Rats. Alright, let's go... Hmm. Thopter. Let's go Thopter. Drum. Stoneforge for a second hammer. I guess we can get the plating now. Yeah, because we already have a hammer. We don't need a second one. And I will happily trade if he attacks. <clears throat> I can't really utilize the second hammer, so I think it's better to just get a plating when I have the Shadow Spear. Alright, he's probably making this attack because he has a second one. I still have to block, but... Definitely have to block. Graven Cairns. Okie dokie. So now we can just make a Saga token, which is not bad. This is just Lurus. Cole again. Oh... That's rough. Because now I can't make a thing. We did, however, draw a Sigarda's Aid. Which is not bad. So now I can go Float Mana. Get an Ornithopter. And then just hammer up the Ornithopter and hope that's good enough. I'm down with it. So, Sigarda's Garda's aid. I'm just going to play the hammer now. And we'll pass. Hope that's good enough. Let's see what we got. Another Colligan's command? That'd be kind of rough. Maybe a terminate. Looks like a Colligan's command. Nope. Red. Okay, that's fine. Land would be nice. Hmm. Not quite a land. Uh, let's go... Definitely going to attack. I think I have to attack. question is, does he block? Probably? Yeah, block's fine. Just play a drum and pass. I wanted to draw a land there so I could, I could equip the Shadow Spear. But... Hmm. I wonder how different this game is if I don't block with the Stoneforge Mystic, the turn that they that he attacked with Ragavan. Cause I could have I could have just taken one hit maybe. Played around the Coligan's command. I mean like getting him to use the Coligan's command wasn't actually that bad. Because it made it so, you know, my my top deck of the uh the hammer was pretty good. Uh see now I'm in this weird spot where like I kind of don't want to attack. I could play the Lavinia. 
which sets me up for Equip Shadow Spear on the Thopter next turn, which I actually don't hate. Let's actually just do that. And that also threatens to block the Lurus. Yeah, let's do that. I think I like that. I think I'm down with that. He knows my last card. It's just a bolt. Yeah. I guess that's a reason not to do that, but it at least gives me the opportunity to maybe equip the Shadow Spear next turn, even if I don't draw a land. But I guess I should have assumed that it's pretty likely he has an Unholy Heat at this point. Hmm. It's a really interesting game. I definitely could have played this a little bit differently. I don't hate the way I played it. Okay, take six, go to 14, land. Land, please. God. Is it 16? Yeah. I don't think I'm winning this game by playing with another Libidian. It's so likely he has a, a removal spell for it. I think I just have to shove. Black, black, colorless. Chump block with Den. Okay. Your turn. We need to find a land. I don't know how many Colligan's commands he's playing, but we need to find a land. All right, so that's probably going to take the plating, if I had to guess. I would have won this game if I had gotten a uh, Colossus Amber instead of the, the plating. That's funny. Took Lavinia. Well, that can't be a good sign. Is this Colligan's command? Yeah, Heartgast Ragavan... Offy Voidwalker. All right, just give me a land, please. Land, please. Even a zero mana creature is good. Just anything. Okay, good. So now I think it's just time to do this. I think it is time. 11. So he takes 11. It's fine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He has 11 himself. What's this? Bolt me? That's 14. Let's see if he bends the card or not. All right. Three, six, nine, eleven, fourteen. 11, 14. Bend to bolt, which makes sense. I don't think bolt's a good draw. Okay. Bobble from the graveyard. Binning a den of the bugbear. That's a good start. For us, that is. Need to dodge a Coligan's command. He knows about the plating, too, so. Alright, land's good. It's a good start. It's a good start. <clears throat> Hold. Hold. So, attack for 8. No, attack for the full 11. Okay. What did we hit? Colossus Hammer. I don't think that's going to do it. Red. Okay. Does give him a Surveil. He's looking for... Colligan's Command, I guess, is his, is his one out. Alright. No Colligan's Command? Alright, go to combat. Woo! What a crazy game. Alright, playing against Black Red. Sanctifier and Vec, very, very good. Prismatic ending, I'm kind of in on. Seal, path, no. I don't like that stuff. I like lantern. And potentially needle, because he usually plays a, a lot of engineered explosives. Lavinia is pretty bad. Let's cut three more cards. Hmm. I think maybe you can just trim on some of the Memnites and Ornithopters. Memnite, I think, is a little bit better against Ragavan specifically, whereas Ornithopter just chump blocks it. And maybe only one Lantern, because it's not a card I want to draw a ton of. Yeah, I think I like that. That makes sense. One Lantern seems fine to me. It's a card that you want access to off of Versa Saga for, like, their Luris draws, but I don't think you want to draw multiples of them ever. 
Okay. Stoneforge, Soul Guide, Memnite, Shadow Spear. This hand is really low powered, but they are playing a Thoughtseize deck. So I think I'm going to keep it. This is kind of the opposite of those hands I was talking about before that you want, you know, an equipper in the hand, but not, not necessarily just a only, a, what you call it. Um, hammer, what I meant to say. All right, I'm going to play the cast the men then in case they have dash ragman. I want to make sure I am protected against that. Alpine moon. Sure. Nexus or Saga? I would assume Saga. Yeah. Okay. Blood Crypt untapped. Okay. Got a Ragavan. Okay. So let's go... Let's just fetch for a Plains. Excuse me. Let's go Stoneforge Mystic. I think I'm just going to get the plating, honestly. No attacks. That might have been a free attack for one, but like any removal spell, he just goes kill this, spell bomb the other thing. So I think I'd rather just leave max blockers for Ragavan. Eh, I guess that's also kind of not great for me because now he can, if he has a land, he can pop this and then spell bomb the Stoneforge. Which it looks like he does. Yeah. Not great. Not great. Alright. Hit a Seachrome Coast, which I don't really want to draw that. <sighs> well, I drew a Seachrome Coast anyways. Uh, I guess it is Luris time. Hope that he somehow doesn't have a discard spell. I think he probably does. All right, no blocks. It's not looking great. It's not looking great. Hand did not really pan out. Red, black. Is this Luris? I mean, if he goes to cast the Luris, I think I will pop the Soul Guide. Just so he can't play the Engineered Explosives. All right, looks like he is going to cast it. Which is actually kind of fine, because then I can just go Luris replay my soul guide. I drew a hammer. Hmm. Two cards in hand. I could go Luris Memnite, which gives me a second blocker for the Ragavan. Maybe that's better. Maybe just go Luris Memnite, so I have two blockers for Ragavan. Well, actually, one blocker. I don't really want to block with Luris. So yeah, let's actually do that. Let's go Luris Memnite. And I think I'm just going to play the Shadow Spear from hand. And pass. I do need to block this Ragavan. I understand that my Luris is likely dying. But even if Luris dies, then I still have a blocker for the Ragavan, hypothetically. Yeah, except for that. It's Beats. So we need to find a Sigarda's Aid. Okay. I can kill the Shadow Spear. I don't actually care too much about the Shadow Spear in the grand scheme of things. So Sigarda's Aid, hope he doesn't have a removal spell. Ugh, now he names Nexus. Okay, now we're kind of shut out a little bit. Hmm. What do we need to draw? I don't really know at this point. Eh. Okay. That's kind of a fine draw. A drum and a hammer. All right, well, I definitely don't want the hammer. I'll take the drum, or definitely don't want the drum. Uh, the question is, do I want a shock to play a hammer? I don't think I do. So I'm going to play that. Just play this tapped. Uh, so you can fire up the den. I guess he just fires up the den and forces a trade. So I have to trade for the trade for the den. Five. What's this thing do again? One one tapped and attacking. So yeah, I have to trade. I guess I trade for the Luris. 
three, four, five, six, go to two. It's not great either way. I don't know if I have a way out of this. It doesn't involve Mem Knight. All right, game three. Game number three. Yeah, I think I like the way I sideboarded. Let's go. We're on the play. Hopefully we can find a Sanctifier. Seacrone Coast. Sanctifier. The sand is really high upside if I draw a land. And if I miss, I don't do anything. I think I'm going to mulligan it. That's uh, the way the cookie crumbles. So, I guess I keep this, put back Marsh Flats, and Springleaf Drum, and just go Land, Mem Knight, Soul Guide, Turn 2, Smith. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Okay, this is not a good way to start. I think this matchup is pretty rough in general, too. Just like the Rakdos all removal deck. Probably not the best matchup for the creature combo deck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's fine. Alright, step one. Draw the Saga. I could sack the Lantern, but... This is when he has Alpine Moon. Croxa. Okay. Eh, I probably should have sacked the Lancer in there. I just kind of have sixth. Okay. White Source. Eh, all right. Take it. I should have sacked the Lancer in EOT, I think. I just have sixth. I should have sacked the Lancer in response to... Yeah, in response to that. Yeah. That was a mistake. That was definitely a mistake. I just had... I was just have sixth. EE -E for one. Okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> Funnily enough, I think I have to get... Ugh, this is rough. Well, float mana. I assume he's going to pop this in response. No. Letting me get the needle, huh? Well, there's no point in getting a one mana card. The only consideration would be to get Springleaf Drum if I really wanted to get the Paladin in play. Or the, the Sanctifier, excuse me. I'm just going to Needle Explosives. And then we'll go play Smith. Because I have the mana floating. Bricked on Smith, which is kind of a beat. Zach for Uno. Maybe he just didn't expect me to bring in the Needle. What's this? Unholy Heat the Smith, sure. Yeah, land would be bad for me. Black Thoughtsies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and Luris? I think I'm probably just gonna... Yeah, alright, we're out of here. Kind of frustrating. Um, I mean, again, I think this matchup is, is pretty bad for Hammer Time, but our, yeah, obviously I'm all the five, and, you know. Anyways, we're... Uh, I don't know what else to say. Three and one, see you back in just a little bit. Round number five. All right, round number five. Let's see if we can uh, shake off that loss. What do we got? We have a Cigar to Z, a Hammer, and no second land, no one or zero drop, but I think this hand is fine. On the draw, I think on the play, maybe you'd mulligan, but I think on the draw, I'm going to keep this. Maybe even on the play, you'd keep, but if this hand draws a second land, it's quite good. It's basically all you could ever ask for if you find a second land. So, I'm kind of in. I'm going to lead on Cigar to Zaid. Okay. Not a second land. Kind of the opposite of a second land, actually. Another two drop. That is the downside to putting Lavinia in your deck, as you kind of mess with the curve a little bit. Alright, Misty for Triome. 
This appears to be blue white control. All right, there's a Memnite. Let's see if they want to counter that. And we'll just pass. I think I might end step. Maybe just the Shadow Spear. I don't want to. I don't want to Yolo jam the hammer. Because they likely are just going to have a counter spell or a removal spell. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna slow roll the hammer a little bit. Land would be nice. Okay. Maybe I want to Yolo jam now. I mean, given that I have the Stoneforge Mystic, maybe it's okay. Yeah, it might be okay. I mean, they so they likely have a counter spell, but all right, take two. Just having the Stoneforge Mystic means I think it's okay to jam there. They're also missing land drops. Okay, go to combat, attack for two, play a Sentinel. Sentinel might get countered. Sure. Still missing land drops? <laughs> White. Prismatic ending? Cigar Design or Memnite? Cigar Design or Memnite? It's kind of a tough call. Depends on their hand, I think. My guess would be Cigar Design, but I don't think I'd fault them for either one. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, land. Land! Okay. It's not a land, it's not a bad draw. A weird game. We're both just getting horribly mana screwed. <laughs> They're the ones that are more likely to get out of it before me because they have more lands in their deck, but. And they did get out of it. Well, remember that time I kept the one land around the draw? Yeah, it's turn six and I still have one land in play. I have all two drops in my hand. Maybe I should have mulliganed. I don't know, I thought the keep was fine. Just a bit of unfortunate... bit of unfortunate luck. I stand by the keep. Alright, they're gonna steal the Sentinel. Okay, well, I drew a land. So that's not bad. Now the question is, what do we cast? Uh, probably just Lavinia, to be honest with you. Not that Lavinia is going to do all that much against them, because they don't usually play that many free spells. But I think it's fine to get the Lavinia down. Maybe it's better to resolve the Stoneforge Mystic or the Smith, because I'm up a card. But... All right, I think I'm going to attack first. See what they elect to do. Maybe tap draw? Sure. Now I'm gonna cast the Smith. Try and get my two for one. So I'm gonna take the drum. I don't think I'm gonna play the drum though. Don't think I wanna give them a card off of this. I don't think it's worth it. The drum doesn't do that much for me, either. Hmm. So now I can go drum, pay a mana, this thing gets a counter attack for six. Or potentially just not attack and play a Stoneforge Mystic, only attack for four. Let's cast the drum and see what happens. I'm gonna pay. All right, that thing happens. Eh, I'll just attack. Like, I think the attack's good because I kind of have a feeling they have to wrath anyways. And if they wrath, I now have the drum in play, which lets me double spell as a follow up. Because they have solitude, shark typhoon for three. I guess that's also pretty good because now they can eat. Probably this. Eating the smith. Okay, well I can't do anything else post-combat. So they go to seven. Yeah, the shark is actually pretty annoying because that bricks all my tutus. Hmm. That is pretty annoying. Hmm. It's very time raveler. <clears throat> 
It's not looking great. It's not looking great. How about a Memnite? Oh, it's my way out of this. They have four cards. I think Paladin Plating. Hope they don't have a counter spell. Let's play Paladin. I didn't counter it. Eh. All right, just play the plating. I'm gonna give them a card. I, I think I'm far enough behind that I have to try and give them. I, I have to try and at least do some stuff here. Well, that all resolved, which is good. Equip here. Cast Memnite. And I think I'm just attacking them. I don't think I'm. I think I'm gonna ignore Teferi for now. So I guess they're just gonna trade, take three, or take four, go to three. Excuse me. And then I can just move everything to the Paladin. Maybe the Memnite. Probably the Memnite actually. Yeah, let's just move everything to the Memnite. So equip for zero. Equip for zero. Pass. So now we have a 6-2, which is lethal. I think that was better than attacking Teferi. I understand that then, now they can just plus and hold up Wrath, but... If I attack Teferi, they Wrath main phase. They're still at 7. And then I guess I just go Lavinia, Paladin, Equip. Maybe that's okay. So now they bounce... The Memnite? But then I just move everything onto the Paladin. It's still lethal, right? Yeah. Okay. I guess they could bounce the Plating. And then maybe counter the Plating on the way back down. Oh, they bounce Paladin. Okay. So they have a removal spell for Memnite? I mean, I'm just going to go to attacks and make them cast a spell. Because the Memnite is lethal. Like, I don't have to do anything else. I can just go to attacks. They have to act. Alright, attack you for six. Let's see what they got. Verdict. Prismatic ending, the Shadow Spear. Uh, I guess that's annoying. Sure, now they can trade. Okay, touche. Touche. And I guess now they probably just counter the Paladin. Eh, I think I'm still going to cast it. Oh, they don't counter the Paladin. Okay, that's good. So now we can just go... Hmm... Lavinia, probably? I think Lavinia makes sense. If I play the hammer there, and they have a prismatic ending on the, the paladin, it could have been bad. Like, if I play hammer, they prismatic ending this, I can't play another creature, and I want to have two creatures in play for next turn to be able to beat... Well, I guess the second creature still just kind of loses to Wrath, but... Hmm. Wonder what they are doing. We shall see. Ink Moth Nexus. Hmm. Okay. Question is, do I want to play Paladin before the Hammer? I don't think so, because that's a lot worse against Wrath. So I can just play Hammer. Let's just go Nexus, tap Nexus, play Hammer. See what they do. They could Wrath in response to the Hammer. But then I could just go Paladin, Lavinia, Equip. But I kind of assume they have a Wrath. This has to be a Wrath, right? Yeah, okay. So let's go Float a White. Wrath happens. Cast another Paladin. See if they have a Counterspell. Okay. How about a Lavinia? Counter that one? 
I only have one mana. All right, they have two cards in hand. We have a Lavinia and a Plating, which is technically lethal. We could start Lur start get Lurus going if we want to, but haven't really found a good window to to do the Lurus stuff yet. Mostly because we've just been choked on mana the whole game. But all right, they have two cards in hand. I mean, I'm probably just gonna go Plating equip Lavinia and make them answer that and see what they do and then if maybe follow that up with double stone forge it's a fairy hero huh hmm okay tuck the lavinia they have one card left interesting um i mean i think i'm just gonna fire up ink moth and try to kill the fairy like, I don't have a lethal attack with Ink Moth, so let's just do that. I want to get this Hero of Dominaria off the battlefield. So I think I like this play. I'll just go after the go after the hero. I need a hero. This has been a pretty sweet game. Alright, attack to Fairy Hero. I don't think there's anything they can have here. They don't usually play Path. And then I think I'm just gonna double stone forge. I mean, I guess I'm not gonna double stone forge if this does, if this gets countered. But so let's just get the last two hammers. I just fetch him at a thousand life, anyways. Get the last couple hammers. All right, your turn. They have one card. Things are actually not going that poorly for us. So they plus Tef. So the last card's got to be a banger. I guess it's probably a Wrath, right? Has to be a Wrath, because it's the one card they couldn't cast last turn. So let's just go equip the Stoneforge. I have no interest in animating the, the Nexus into Wrath. I'm just going to attack them. Just make them have the Wrath. Make them answer it. I guess this could be a Shark Typhoon. Fact or fiction? Alright, well, they're, they're forced to take Shark Typhoon, so I will force them to do that. One, two, one, two, three, four. So they have to trade for this and go to... Ooh, I'm a Black Source short. If I had another... Yeah, no, never mind. So they make a 4-4 four, four trade. Go to two, and now I can play the Smith. All right, trade's good. They go to two. Play the Smith. Probably just put Luris in my hand after the Smith. Yeah, I'm just gonna. This is finally, finally a good opportunity to Luris. We finally found a good opportunity. It only took us 13 turns to do so. I like our spot though. They have one card. They have a Teflon four, which I guess they can bounce. Maybe the Stone Forge or something, I don't know. They bounce the plating, which also makes sense, because they might just want to counter on the way back down. Another Tef. Okay. And that one they're plussing. With one card left, huh? And they're at two. How much mana do I have? Six. Hmm. I want to try and play around Supreme Verdict, so why don't I just go Plating first, see if that resolves. It does resolve. Okay, so now I have two lethal threats. So now I will attack. So now a Shark Typhoon's not going to do it. It has to be Wrath, right? Looks like it is a Wrath. Okay, Wrath is fine. So now we can go Esper Sentinel. Drum. Equip the Sentinel. Pass the turn. Still have a Lurus. Although if they count with Lurus, it's not great. Yeah, bounce the Sentinel, which makes sense. So now I don't have a lethal attacker. That is kind of awkward. 
that one turn window where I don't have a lethal creature. Hmm. That might be what turns this game around. Is that Teferi number four? It is. Alright, so that's the last Tef. Still only have one card. I think what I want to do is just threaten the Tef with the Nexus. And, like, kind of not really care if they interact with it. I mean, sort of care, but... I get to kill this Tef, then I'm happy about that. It's another Shark Typhoon. Prismatic ending on the plating. Okay, it's not great. So Tef takes one, goes to four. And... They're gonna scry, it's fine. Guess I should probably take a look and see what they're doing with the scries. They went top top. Well, that's lovely. All right, your turn. Top top, huh? That can't be good for us. This has been a crazy game. Hmm. And they have two cards. So I could go for lethal with the paladin. Go paladin, animate nexus, equip. Okay, let's play paladin first and see what they do. They might counter this. They choose not to counter it. So, Animate Nexus, Equip, still have mana to play Luris if I want to. So, let's do that. Let's Animate Nexus. Maybe I was supposed to animate the Nexus before playing the Paladin. Because now I guess they could... Well, they don't play Path. And this thing minus, they can't ending this. If they had a Counterspell, they would have countered this, right? What happened? Target player draws two cards. Uh, okay. Interesting. So they didn't counter the Paladin, and they also didn't steal the Hammer. Okay, I'll equip. I'll make them show me. Show me! Attack you for 11. What you got? Is this a Shark Typhoon? I don't know why they're making one this big. They just make a 1-1, one, one, right? Okay. They made a 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Okay, block is fine. Um, the question is, do I want to play out these hammers now? They have three cards. Yeah, I think I do. Alright, it's always yes to this. Saga was a really good draw. Let's play another hammer. Draw a card. And now let's go Sentinel. And then we can equip some hammers in the Sentinel. Just all the hammers in the Sentinel. I guess I could have put one in the Paladin, but remember, the reason I'm not moving this hammer is because this Nexus already has two damage marked on it, and if I move this hammer over, this Nexus will die, and I don't want that to happen, so. Alright, the nice thing about all of this is we still have a Lurus in our back pocket, so we still have that going for us. This game has been insane, just absolutely insane. Uh, so why don't we just make a whole bunch of lethal... Well, they have the Tef, so I don't want to play into Verdict. So what if I just move another hammer here, which plays around Shark Typhoon a little bit better. And we'll just go to attacks with this. They already kind of have to Verdict this, right? So I assume a verdict. 
All right, they don't think they can pay an additional 21, so we'll draw a card off that. All right, verdict happens. Second main. Let's go play a Sentinel. Let's play... I think I'm still not committing the Lurus. I think there's just not a lot of reason to. How many verdicts have they gone through? They've gone through three verdicts? Yeah... Eh, I think I'm still gonna wait. I guess, what am I waiting for? Is the question I should ask. Well, I'm waiting for Paladin. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah. Because if I Lurus Paladin, one, two, three, four, five, I guess I would still have just enough mana to Saga, right? Even if I Lurus Paladin. So maybe it was worth it. Alright, so we'll make a thing. Untap. I think I'm running out of things to get with uh, with these sagas. We'll make another homie. Let's get a... I guess we'll get a Mem Knight. It's a lethal creature. Might as well. That thing goes to chapter 2. Uh, let's just go... Well, we have two lethal attackers, so I think I'm just going to go to combat first. I don't think there's much of a reason to fire up the Nexus here. Okay, attack you, attack you. What you got? What you got, opponent? This game has been a slog. An absolute slog. It's going to be a lot of editing with this, with this match. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> A lot of editing with this match. I don't know if this is how the games normally play out, but... My goodness. Alright, prismatic ending on the construct. Okay. Resolves. Now what? Archmage's Charm. They have one card left? Okay. think I'm gonna play the Luris now. Now well, feels like a fine time to do it. Okay, what do we cast off the of Luris? Um, probably a Smith, because I mean they're at one. I don't really need to Paladin to equip anything. The only consideration with Paladin would be, um... yeah, this is fine. The only consideration with Paladin would be to make the Nexus lethal, but I think this is also good. All right, uh, I don't think I'm gonna play the Thopter. Not really a lot of reason to. I'm just going to pass. Alright, they're going to castle. I mean, they've got to be running out of gas, right? <laughs> just like, in the ter in terms of how many actual relevant cards they have left in their deck. There can't be that much in there. And they went two cards in the bottom. They didn't scry upkeep, though, after putting two cards in the bottom, so... That may have been a mistake. We'll see. All right, we'll make a thing. We're also getting into uh, we're getting into eight mana equip a hammer territory. Not that that matters because they're at one anyways. So, like all my stuff's lethal regardless. Okay, I will get uh, a drum. I don't know, maybe a Memnite. I kind of rather just have the Memnite in my deck. Because I assume they have a Wrath here. Uh, what do I want to cast? I think there's still not really a lot of reason to cast a Paladin. They have no targets for Stoneforge. Um, I do kind of want to cast something... Eh. eh, I'll just go to Attacks. I'm not really sure at this point. I'm going to send everything but the Luris. Okay, they tap draw, sure. Eh, that's fine. Yep. I accept the tap draw. Now let's play a Smith? Eh, I guess I'll play the Paladin now. Like, I don't even think I have much left in my deck to draw off the Smith, to be honest. Equip here. Equip, I guess, here. 
I, I really don't know. I'm just kind of taking some random game actions at this point. Equip here. I'll just pass. All right, your turn. I don't really know. <clears throat> I want to know what their plan is. How are they winning? They've already gone through two, three Shark Typhoons. They've gone through a Teferi Hero. I mean, I guess maybe their win condition is, like, tuck their own Teferi? Dress down. Okay. Sure. It's not a bad card, but I don't really think it gets them out of this. Per se. <sighs> this game is, uh... Oh boy, this game is a lot. This game is a lot. Alright, Dress Down dies. This is game one, by the way. They're not in nine minutes. I have a feeling that this match is likely going to end in them timing out, but I don't know. We'll see. Lavinia. Alright, let's just go to attacks. I'm too bored to do anything. Snapcaster Cryptic. Okay. Got it. Now we can fire up some Nexi. Do we start the poison or do we start going after Tef? Uh, hmm. Not sure. Kind of think it's... So they're going to tap my stuff and bounce their snap. Oh, and they're going to snap Verdict. That's the joke. Okay, so I'm just not going to fire up the Nexus. Sure. Right, because they plus the Tef. So I don't really want to cast. I don't really want to attack with Nexus there. I will, however, play a Smith. Actually, I'll just draw a card off the Hammer. What I want to find is... I want to find the... Uh, I want to find a Saga. Maybe I could have just been making them draw cards. <laughs> To be honest. Because them drawing cards is probably good for me. They're at 14 in their deck. Uh, I'm just not going to play any more creatures. Alright, your turn. Your turn, opponent. Show me what you got. So we're 28 minutes into the match. And this is game number one. So, yeah. That's, that's where we're at. That is where we are at. Alright, they got a verdict. Looks like they are casting Verdict. They're going to bounce their snap. I accept. I wonder if I could have won this game. I'm going to stop thinking about that. <laughs> Alright, I'll take one. I will take one. I accept. Alright, Verdict happens. Sure. It's fine. It's all fine. Colorless and a blue. Chalice on one. Okay. Let's go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I don't have quite enough... Actually, I do, right? To, to activate the hammer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is eight. So I need ten total mana. So let's go fire up Nexus. I'm going to try and kill Tef here, I think. Fire up Nexus. I'm going to try and kill Tef. Tef is down. I like that. That's good for me. There's the Saga. Here's a Lavinia. I'm not going to play the Thopter yet. Eh, maybe I should have, actually, now that I think about it. Because <sighs> having a second a second lethal creature is well, if I draw if I draw Paladin, I just have the Nexus anyways, right? If I draw Paladin, I have all these hammers to move around to the next size. Because I want to make sure if I draw Paladin I can make, you know, multiple lethal attackers, which I can already do with the, the next size. So I don't think that's terribly concerning. Okay, another saga. The question is, am I firing up Nexus? Yeah, I think so. Let's fire up the Nexi. 
And I'll go to attacks. I mean, I know I know they have Snapcaster Mage, but so they're gonna snap crit thick. That's fine. This game has been uh, this game is something. This game is something. All right, tap draw. I accept. We'll play another Urza Saga. That is the last two. And then it's your turn. What you got, opponent? All right, they're castling. They only have 10 cards in their deck. I think there is a legitimate chance we just deck them. I know I said this game was probably going to end in them timing out, but... Well, I guess I said this match is going to end in them timing out. Okay, they've, they've decided to concede. Okay, probably a wise choice. Maybe they should have done that a little while ago. Playing against blue-white control. Um, let's see. Soul Guide. I mean, they have Snapcaster Mage, but I'm not really in love with the Soul Guides. Prismatic Ending is kind of meh. I want Defense Grid. I like Needle. Uh, Seal of Cleansing. What do they usually sideboard? They usually have Chalice. Do I even care that much about Chalice? I guess I, I, guess I do, right? So maybe I want to bring in the seals. I think the lantern's too narrow. It's only good against Snapcaster Mage. And I think I'm not a huge fan of Lavinia. Actually, Mem Ornithopter sucks, right? Yeah, let's just get Ornithopter out of here. At least Memnite attacks. Alright, game number two. Even though I'm still fairly certain this game, this match is going to end in the timing out at some point. Uh, yeah, this hand's got a lot of good stuff going on. I'll keep it. You got a turn one sentinel, turn two defense grid, turn three maybe aid plus seal or something along those lines. All right, go sea chrome coast sentinel, and I got a mem knight. Your turn. All right, basic island, and prismatic ending. Looks like a prismatic ending on the Sentinel, and paying a mana, I would assume. Nope. Maybe they changed their mind. Alright, let's go to attacks. Maybe I should have played the grid first to play around Snapcaster Mage, but I think if they want to run out of Snapcaster for no value, I'm okay with that. How about a defense grid? Ooh, they just let it resolve? That's good for us. That is good for us. So now I guess they can Tef plus Spreading Seas the Nexus. Is that what they were considering casting last turn? Sure. And they didn't pay the mana. Which is kind of weird because they can't hold up mana. Huh. Okay. So this is likely a Wrath, I guess? I'm just going to put Luris in my hand. Yeah, I'm just going to put Luris in my hand. Because I assume this is a Wrath. I don't want to commit anything else to the board. So I'd rather just set myself up for a post-Wrath scenario. Not that I even want to necessarily cast the Luris, even if they... Well, if they do Wrath, I think I would cast the Luris, but... So this is a plus. Plus isn't doing all that much because they can't really cast spells on my turn. Uh, how much do I want to commit here? Tef's at 5. I could just seal the Spreading Seas and then fire up the Nexus, attack Tef for 3. I actually kind of like that play. I actually kind of like that play a lot. Let's do that. It's like, it doesn't commit a ton, and it makes the it makes it so that the Tef is 100% dead next turn regardless. Maybe I should just be ignoring the Tef when I have the grid in play. That might also be something I should be doing. But this like might get them into a spot where they want to, I don't know. Like Wrath main phase, and then maybe I can kill them if I draw a land or uh, a hammer. Alright, so they killed the defense grid, sure. They let me draw a card. Alright, let's uh let's try and kill the fairy. I would like to see what they do about that. Oops, not you. Tech Tef. 
So I assume they're going to maybe cycle a Shark Typhoon. Nope, they just let Tef die. Well, I'm kind of down with that. Let's just uh, keep committing not much to the board. And we'll pass the turn. Your turn. I will play this type of game. I'll, I'll sit here and do nothing for a while. <laughs> kind of just like the first game. <laughs> kind of just like the first game. I am down to do nothing. Supreme Verdict. So now they're going to pay one. No, they didn't pay one. So I guess Counterspell? Is that what's happening? I mean, I'm just going to go for it, right? Play Paladin. Mm. Yeah, so let's go play Paladin. See what they want to do about that. Mm. Go Drum. Tap Paladin. Animate Nexus. Play Hammer. Show me the removal spell. Show me the removal spell. What you got? They do not have the removal spell. Okay. Well, I got a lot of editing to do for that one. So, anyways, let's just go over the deck real quick. So, 4-1 and one lost to what I would kind of expect to lose to with only two Sanctifiers. Maybe that Rakdos matchup gets a lot easier if you play more Sanctifiers. Um, but, I don't know. This Hammer deck is still really, really powerful. It's a very uh, consistent... An explosive deck, if you're into that sort of thing, it is one of the probably, maybe if it's probably the best Urza Saga deck, to be honest with you. It's the deck that, that uses it, kind of uses all parts of the Buffalo the most. And just a, you know, really good deck if you're into attacking with uh, very large creatures as early as turn two. So if you have made it all the way to the end of the video, you're a trooper first and foremost. Thank you very much. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.